My name is Shiny Brar. I'm a physics engineer and I work for McGill. This is the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment. It's called CHIME for short. And uh, it's a collaboration, it's a big collaboration. Uh, the three big universities involved in it is University of British Columbia, uh, University of Toronto, and the McGill University. It's a radio telescope and it's out here in Penticton, BC. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at radio waves emitted by hydrogen way, way, way back in the history of the universe. And as they hit us, hit our telescope, uh, in the form of radio waves, we detect them, like something similar to your uh, phone. We have to subtract all the terrestrial information that humans and cars and people walking around produce uh, from the signal that's coming from the sky. So as, as the universe is expanding, if you imagine like a wave, the wave kind of stretches. So, what sig so based on how much stretch a wave has gone through, you can find out how old it is, right? And that's basically it. So, uh, um, so we track a thousand of these uh, stretches. We, we simultaneously detect a thousand of these stretches at any, given, at any given time. We amplify it and then we send it to these specialized computers called FPGAs. The FPGAs convert them into uh, numbers, digital numbers. Then we have so we have a 2,500 core CPU cluster here uh, that then sifts through that data in real time. And then uh, we take a scientific decision. Oh, is this event interesting or not? Is this data interesting or not? And then we, and then the code will say like, yep, it's interesting. And that's when the stornator comes in. Uh, we have optic fiber laid out that connects to the stornator and we instantly download the data. Uh, onto the RAM of the stornator and then eventually to the hard disks. Yeah, so that's the whole procedure of how data from the sky ends up in a stornator. In our case here, the stornator is like, um, is attached to close to I would say 400 computers. So one stornator is accessible through 400 computers and, and they just seamlessly uh, get information from it and save information on it at all times. So how much data do we process, right? It's so the entire world's cell phone network, the entire world's cell phone network for one year, we process that much data in one day at this telescope. So potentially we need to save a lot of data. So we went on this journey and we were like, okay, what fits us and our needs? I think, A, we're not a big company, we're just a university, we have a tight budget. And, but then you have this requirement of making something that is basically at the edge, bleeding edge of what is feasible. And Stornator kind of like check mark all of those parts. And, and the final thing was people, like that's why we came back to you guys, because we were like, okay, first time around we bought a smaller case and the next time around we were like, okay, they were very well, we had some issues and we sent an email and I think it was within like a couple hours, you guys were on top of it. And then we were like, okay, we'll buy another one from them. I think it's just simpler things like that, which add up. And I think currently we have a 45 drive stornator and we just upgraded this week. We're putting it in it's a 60 drive one and hopefully in the future we'll have many more. Oh, aliens. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I mean, because they're unexplained right now, there's currently more theories about what they could be than, and some of them are so ludicrous that SETI is one feasible it looks feasible out of all of them let's put it that way like like it, it, it is interesting because my job is to like detect them and make sure that we detect them in as purest form as possible and then there are other people and some people think yeah they're aliens and i'm not i, I like that's the whole process of science right Un until uh until proven otherwise they could be right yeah
They could be right. It could be aliens, man. It could be like some guy just in a faraway galaxy sitting on his laptop and be like, all right, let's bug with Earth today. Enter. And then we get something here. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs>